In this fantastical world, the raiders are the people who go after shadow creatures that prey on defenseless people, steal priceless treasures, and defend the weak and vulnerable. They are hailed as heroes around the world because of the danger that comes with their work. Nevertheless, they are envied by some people. But besides everything, it is a job that inspires everyone. When a raider is about to pass away, their heart beats the fastest. Min Jae-hyun is seen arguing with Jong woo min a job broker at a raider agency for the raiders who aren't members of any guild. Min Jae-hyun was furious when Jong woo min finally called him after a considerable period of time. He is asked to fight along the front line with a shield in a dungeon filled with monsters and demons. The fact that the children with lower ranks than him have no trouble finding employment, while he is asked to act as a meat shield for the raid infuriates Min Jae-hyun. As a result of their slower speed and higher risk of injury compared to magicians, warriors or combat-focused fighters are not in high demand. The situation for both classes of raiders was very different ten years ago. Despite having a magic aptitude of 97% and the top magician at the time having only 92%, Min Jae-hyun now regrets his choice to not take magic in the third school year. He insisted on engaging in combat merely because magicians at the time did not enjoy a favorable social standing. But since each raider's growth stops at age 20, nothing can be done about it right now. Min Jae-hyun reluctantly accepts the job while regretting his life choices in order to survive in the job market. For the job he accepted, he has been told to arrive at the location by 8 a.m. Before heading to the dungeon, Jong Woo-min claims that they must meet there, but he doesn't explain why. Min Jae-hyun waits for Woo-min the following day, but he is nowhere to be found. Given that Woo-min is an A-rank magician and Jae-hyun is a D-rank warrior class raider, Jae-hyun believes it is pointless for them to collaborate. Before leaving, Jae-hyun runs into myung ho an old friend who is also participating in the raid. Before they are called at the entrance, they both engage in some brief conversation. Before leaving for the raid, Jaehyun checks his phone and looks at a picture of his mother. The magicians enjoyed humiliating the combatants while the raid was still going on. But he has some confidence that he won't perish in the mission thanks to the Meteor Guild's capabilities. Jaehyun tries to check the inventory while chatting with Myung Ho, but his Acer system malfunctions and won't reboot. He is instructed to follow the light by an unknown voice. He checks the Acer system while still following the light and discovers that it is still down. Given that it hasn't experienced a problem of this nature in 17 years, he finds it strange. It might be connected to the voice, he muses to himself. Twenty years ago, in the year 2011, a massive tree appeared out of the Pacific Ocean's depths and eventually sprouted. The mythological entity, known as Yggdrasil, covered the skies in only nine days. Half of humanity died as a result of that and the remaining population was wiped out by famine and plague. It brought disaster to the entire world. To save humans from that tragedy, the first awakened was born at that time. Finally, Jaehyun finds himself in front of a large hidden door with wolves carved into it. While opening the door, he fantasizes about finding treasure and becoming wealthy. However, he instead finds Odin's lost eye, and the Acer system partially boots up. Because the item is unique, he decides to sell it rather than wear it and change his life. Following a new raid restart, a poison mist traps the entire group. Myung Ho is fatally wounded by a backstab from a shadow figure as he attempts to leave with Jae Hyun. He understands that dungeon contract killers might be responsible. Wu Min abruptly emerges from the shadows, shocking Jae Hyun. He admits that it is all his work to plan an attack on the Meteor Guild after asking Wu Min. Wu Min killed every member of the guild and is currently in the dungeon thanks to a connection he made there with his client. Jae Hyun then begins to reflect on the choices he has made in life and realizes that he cannot defeat Wu Min because he is an A-rank magician. He is also among the top 2% of all Americans. He seeks revenge against Wu Min for killing both his friend and the entire guild. However, despite his resolve to keep quiet about the dungeon incident in light of the overall situation, Wu Min immediately resumes his assault on him. The shadow Jaehyun recognizes inside his head appears to hate him for his stupidity and deeds. He understands that the person woman is working for is none other than his own father, who murdered his wife five years prior and is now attempting to hire the same assassin to kill his son. When the artifact Jaehyun discovered during his search begins to be bound to him by his decision, Woman notices that something is strange about the aura surrounding Jaehyun. Woman is shocked that Jaehyun can control his lightning chain because it takes years to master. He ultimately takes revenge on Wu Min, nearly perishes, 
but is saved by a system update that turns back time to the time he had always wanted. Hyun has undoubtedly traveled back in time 11 years to the third year of middle school, proving that it was not a dream. The Norner system has taken the place of the Asser system. He starts by showing his mother more love and switching his application to the magician class in an effort to avoid repeating his previous mistakes. He starts working on himself physically and mentally because he wants to get stronger over time so he can beat his father, an A-rank raider. He receives a text from his childhood friend Kim Yoon, who he lost in his previous timeline, as he is thinking about his abilities and stats. He accepts her invitation to attend the lecture where Yu sung Un, the saintess of Korea, will be speaking. Due to her intense schedule, which was slowly devouring her, the saintess appeared to be exhausted and tired in the following scene. Since Jaehyun has already experienced the future, he is aware of how Yu sung Un died during the 81 dungeon raid. The same power that could have healed her also cost her life due to the toll her own healing spell took on her. Kim Yu Yoong is put on the spot when Jaehyun tells her that he is changing his career path but withholds the reason. He tells Yu Sung manager Un's Park Sung Jae that he is aware of the illness's cure, which infuriates him, and that it is an incurable condition. Jaehyun is granted permission to spend some time with her and is given the opportunity to speak. Jaehyun expresses his desire to mimic her talent which infuriates Park because it is a special talent of hers. She continues to listen, though, and if he can actually heal her, she will let him do whatever he wants. Yu sung Un is the guild master of a strong guild, so when Jaehyun offers to heal her, she agrees to sponsor him in exchange. However, the agreement ultimately comes to an end with Jaehyun joining Yanawa and three requirements in the middle. Both of them are astounded by Jaehyun's talent, and Yu sung Un is finally cured. In order to level up for the future, he is also given permission to practice his skills in the Yanawe Guild's low rank dungeon. As an apology for his rudeness, Mr. Park Sung Jae gives Jaehyun some healing supplies, some other tools, and a stone wrap. Due to the Nora system, as soon as he enters the dungeon, he is immediately transferred to a location called Land of the Dead. The saintess is currently pondering who Jaehyun really is and what the real mystery is surrounding him. She obtains a copy of his profiling documents which contained his personal data as well as his aptitude score for the Mesigian class. She makes the decision right away to observe him perform a skill in person during their next meeting. On the other hand, skeleton demons armed with poisonous bows and arrows are attacking Jaehyun. Kim yu is surprised by Jaehyun's current actions and behavior, and she was taken aback by his abrupt change of mind regarding his chosen career path. To her, he appears to have undergone a complete transformation. When Jaehyun is simultaneously attacked by wraiths, skeletal soldiers, and draugers, the item given to him by the guild undoubtedly helps him greatly. He begins taking out enemies one by one, but suddenly, while the battle is still going on, the equipment breaks. After taking some rest, he finally eliminates all the enemies in the region and teleports to a new location. He is so terrified by the aura in the new area that he cannot move, and the boss's appearance activates a warning signal in his Norner system telling him to leave. But when he tries to use the stone wrap, the boss hits him, causing him to lose his balance and his health to drop dangerously low. Jaehyun is at a great risk because he can't move or dodge, and the boss is charging toward him. However, when he opens his eyes, he notices that the nightshade has stopped moving, and a woman-like figure with horns is heading in his direction. He is unable to understand the horned woman's words when she approaches him. It is obvious from his appearance and magic that he will not be able to defeat Aser but by urging him to become better, she begins to vanish into thin air. Jaehyun, in her opinion, is priceless because Loki personally chose him to oppose the Aser. She also promises that if he succeeds in finishing the nightshade in front of him, she will give him a very special gift. When she leaves, she gives him two months to prepare for and defeat the nightshade in front of him. If he doesn't succeed, his death will happen. Finally, she wishes him luck and disappears. Jaehyun awakens at the dungeon of Yanawe Guild entrance, his injuries completely healed as if nothing had happened. Hell, the goddess of death, appeared to him and gave him a task that would help him advance, but he doesn't know what they want from Jaehyun. Jaehyun responds positively to the saintist's request to meet in person after gathering his thoughts after their exhausting exchange. Due to the fact that he had the highest magic aptitude score ever, 97%, he knows that he'd be contacted right away. The only thing that can force Jaehyun to accept the offer to join the guild is that the guild master herself will have to teach him magic. Mr. Park takes him to a white room where he meets his guild master. Jaehyun spent his entire life training to be a combat warrior, 
so it makes sense that he would go that route since he has no pure magic knowledge at all. Yu Sungun wants to accept his offer, but she first wants to assess his talent. She challenged him to defeat a mana cube, which was used by magicians at least of Birank, but even if he failed, the guild master herself guaranteed that the priority negotiation contract would remain in place. Mr. Park is concerned that the guild master is taking such a difficult test for a novice, but they both agree that wonderful things could happen. Jaehyun, meanwhile, enters the deep ocean created by mana and observes that breathing is not a problem. Prioritizing finding a way out of the situation, he spots what appears to be a glowing crystal under the water. The manager and guild master are both startled when suddenly a crack appears on the mana cube's entry side. By successfully locating the mana core, which he breaks to exit the mana ocean, Jaehyun performs a miracle. Jaehyun sets a record by finding and successfully breaking a mana core in just 10 minutes, while even the most powerful magicians, such as the top 7% of them, take hours to do so. The guild master is shocked by each and every move Jaehyun makes, and he vows to make him the greatest magician ever. On the other hand, Jaehyun's mother and Kim Yoon are both waiting for him. They are both taken aback when Jaehyun exits a luxurious vehicle. Jaehyun is questioned by Kim Yoon regarding his abrupt change of mind regarding a career change, which he quickly avoids. Despite coming from a wealthy family, it seems like she is rather alone when they are not around. He grants her a wish that will allow her to teach magic theory for a year. Because Jaehyun left her alone after the lecture, they begin fighting with the pillows. When Jaehyun's mother calls them down for dinner, she ends their pillow fight. A man by the name of Mr. Min Sono is seen in front of a large dead serpent in an unidentified location, and another man compliments him on his raiding skill. However, the man's clinginess and presence irritate him, so he casts a magic spell on him to make him disappear. At some point, the man loses all memory of his previous activities there. The Yanawe Guild Master begins instructing Jaehyun in magic, which begins with a day of sparring. Jaehyun was mistaken in believing that he could at least land one blow on her because she is an S-rank raider. The Guild Master informs him of the distinctions between a warrior's and a magician's fighting techniques. On her second attack, she easily defeats him, but Jaehyun easily defeats her on the following one after casting a spell to break it. Finally, she demonstrates why the entire guild refers to her as the Guild Master. Although proud Jaehyun is defeated by the Guild Master in their duel, the Guild Master is formally appointed as the first apprentice's teacher after witnessing the child's exceptional talent. While still having second thoughts about his abrupt career change, Kim Yuying begins Jaehyun's lesson on the theories of magic. Jaehyun is somewhat disengaged throughout the lesson. Kim Yuying finds it impressive that he was able to adapt to the magic lesson. The manager of Yanawa's training facility is supervising everyone during the training session when she notices Jaehyun's distracted guild master behavior. She is confident that Jaehyun will surpass her someday as an S-rank magician and astound the entire world. Since the mana enhancement pill is a product that all magicians desire, Jaehyun tries to make it at home to stably increase his own mana, but he utterly fails every time. Since no one in 2020 is aware of the recipe for the pill and he is the only one who is aware of it, he is unable to inquire about it. Jaehyun hopes to establish a profitable relationship with Lee Jae Sang, the future alchemist who created the pill, by connecting with him. The institution Jaehyun finds most appealing is the Miller's Academy, where the man is a first-year student. His mother assumes that a robber or intruder has broken into the house because of the condition it is in after his experiment. Son of the first S-rank raider to enter Korea after Idrisil ascended above the Pacific Ocean is the alchemist Lee Jae Sang. Jaehyun travels through a portal to Taegu, where the Miller's Academy is located, a city that has been abandoned due to the monster outbreak, in order to meet Lee Jaehyun's son. Lee Jae Sang is being bullied by almost all of the Academy students when Jaehyun finds him in trouble with one of them. While insulting Jaehyun, the unsettling classmate assumes that Lee must be his big brother. Enraged, Jaehyun casts a spell on the bully that breaks his arm. Lee and everyone else watching are astounded by his ability to cast a spell without encanting. The mana barrier blocks the bully's attempt to strike him with his sword, so the latter instead fires a holy arrow into his face. Jaehyung is perplexed by the bully's condition, so he uses a health potion to help him fully recover. He then heads to the nurse's office with Lee. That concludes part one of this recap. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. What will happen next? If you would like to see a part two of this manhwa, let us know in the comments section below. Till next time.